How's it going today, everybody? Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab. Welcome to the Guitar Marie. Inside this box is a guitar that's part of a 32 year old story that involves rejection, redemption, deception, and marijuana. So, the explanation. Uh, way back in 1988, I went to what isn't even arguably the worst guitar store in my area at the time, but definitely the worst. Uh, it was a Sunday. I had broken my high E string and I was a teenager, so I had a buck for a string. I went down there and the little old man behind the counter couldn't figure out where the single strings were when I showed him. He tried to charge me 10 bucks for one of these things, which is more than the price of a set of strings. And then when I asked to talk to the manager, she came down and I insulted her store so much that she offered me a job. I came in the next day on a Monday. I figured it was better than what I was currently doing, delivering pizza for godfathers. And she handed me a bunch of catalogs and said, I want to turn this place into a really hip spot. The first catalog, the first contact number that I saw was Charvel. And I called them up and I said, I want to carry Charvel in my store. And this was 1988, so the phrase stay in your lane didn't exist yet, but that was what Charvel told me. Know your place. You are a little mom and pop crap store, and no. I was sad, but then I came across the next phone number for Ibanez. Now this was 1988, so Ibanez had just the year before done the gem with Steve Vai, the RG550, the uh, Saber, Power, and Radius. Power got discontinued, Saber turned into the S, and the Radius turned into the Joe Satriani. But this is just one year afterwards, and nobody knew how Ibanez was gonna fare with all this stuff, so they were more than happy to let me carry their guitars in our little store. So I got a bunch of Ibanez guitars in there, and I started pumping these things out like nobody's business. The guitar department was the only department that was doing well in this store. We didn't sell a drum set. We didn't get any good drum sets in. We couldn't sell keyboard to save our life. The woman who was trying to run the store was the granddaughter of the owner. And she had just graduated from business school and she, I believe, minored in drama. So she got all this fancy actor makeup in there thinking that we were going to sell a ton of that and we didn't sell any of it. So my silly long haired stoned ass was the only person that was actually doing good. I was blowing out RG 550s left and right. I thought it was really neat that I could sell these things with a case and a bunch of extra crap for 550 bucks. The manager didn't like that. She, uh, she was telling me I was giving away all the profits and she was completely correct. But my goal at the time was not so much to make the money I wanted to take the sale from all the other stores in the in the area. Why should I buy a 550 from you when I can go buy it from Eddie at Hi Ho for 550 bucks? Well, the other stores started uh, coming and looking around. One day, Charvel called, and the manager took the call. She wanted to get Charvel in there herself because she wanted to be able to say like oh yeah well our guitar department's doing great and we've got this guy over here and then i brokered the deal with charvel but see here's the thing is that this had been a couple months since i put in that initial call to charvel where they were pretty much like no i was doing fine with ibanez i even wanted to get kramer in but i was like i don't need kramer that'll just get in the way of me selling 550s so one day I just happened to be out and about and doing my thing. Wouldn't you know it, uh, we were close, you know, me and my buddies, and we were uh, enjoying something that was fairly illegal at the time, but perfectly legal in Washington State right now. And uh, I was like, guys, pull over. Let me run in and see what's going on at the guitar store real quick. So I opened up the door and it looked like a uh, scene from Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Spicoli getting out and a bunch of smoke billowing out of the car and everything. And I walked in and there was the guy from Charvel. 
and there was my manager. And they were brokering the deal to become a Charvel uh, dealer right there. And I was so freaking baked that I was just kind of like, what's my name? What's going on? I have no idea. When the guy pulled the guitar out, it was their top of the line. It was in a very rare color. He told me how much this thing was and that I was going to have to sell it in order just to break even. I was going to have to sell the thing for like 800 bucks, 899 if I wanted to throw in the case. That's significantly more than a 550. I played the guitar and the 550 beat the crap out of it. I was just like, I have to stop this. But I was too stoned <laughs> to figure out how to tell my manager, you know, come over here and let me tell you why this is a bad idea. So, the deal happened and the guy left the guitar there. And the guitar that he left there is the same one that's in this box right now. Not the exact same one. It might be though. It's an extremely rare model. Uh, it's a... Uh, kind of a uh, metallic fuchsia. I think it's called Burgundy Mist. Charvel Model 6. And it's from the very, very rare era where they put the JT6 on it instead of a Kaler or the uh, Shaler made Jackson branded trims that they did very shortly thereafter. It also has the uh, Charvel guitar logo on the pointy headstock. Let's open this thing up and take a look. Ooh. I like it. It even says fragile on the inside. That is super cool. What is this? This must be the bar. Tragically, that's not the correct bar. I already know that. What? No. Oh, well, it hurts. I must say this, the guy did an excellent job of packing the thing. Super sweet right off the bat. The Charvel chainsaw case. Oh, how cool is that? Okay. Moment of truth. Is this the actual Model 6 in that rare burgundy mist color that haunted my nightmares? going all the way back to 1988. <laughs> Boy, is it ever. Well, here it is. And you know what? It is completely and totally exactly the color I remember. This is incredibly cool. These are original. The thing that kind of sucks about it is that it's after the, the actual nut itself, so it affects just how much action you have with this, the JT6. Not a Floyd Rose, the JT6. I know this to be a fact. That right there this is beyond incorrect. That is, this falls into the category of how dare you. I already told you, this is not the right bar. This right here 
looks like something off of a very inexpensive um, licensed under Floyd thing. It doesn't feel like a real German made Floyd bar. How do I know? Because I have a Jackson JT6 right here. And that is what it's supposed to look like right there. Very similar to an Ibanez Edge. This is what the bar to a Jackson JT6 looks like. Not like that. Now, I've been told that an Ibanez bar will fit in, and they look very similar from uh, Ibanez Edge. Let's find out, shall we? That is so similar. I'm willing to bet it'll pop right in. Yep. So this right here needs to be replaced. And it looks like there might even have been some damage that was done to this thing, which makes me tragically sad. The person that owned this guitar last told me that they bought it specifically because it had a Floyd Rose, and then they were uh, disappointed because it turns out they don't like Floyd Rose. Well, there are issues with that. The first one being that it's not a freaking Floyd Rose, it's a Jackson JT6. If it's got the wrong receiver for the bar on it, then I guarantee you it's not set up correctly. I have no idea when the last time this thing was off. Wow! That is not the original block. Not even close. Probably an FU upgrade. Well, FU too! It'll be alright because a new friend of mine from Scotland sent me some parts. He didn't have a full JT6. I had something he needed. He had something I needed. We made a little trade. Let's see just how good of a trade I made. Oh, cool black paper. Mr. Scotland. Oh my goodness. Hey look, it's the right part. Look, it even says Jackson. Is this the important piece? There it is. There it is, right there. That is the piece that I need. Oh, do not tell me this. Oh, you stupid asshole. Okay. Well, tragically, this plate may or may not be ruined. It needs to be tapped. So be it. So, I wasn't really going to do a whole lot talking about this particular trim, but this really, really upsets me when things like this happen and I was just going to kind of let it go but I want this to kind of serve as a cautionary tale for anybody who's thinking about doing I know for anybody who's thinking about maybe doing something and you've got just a little bit of knowledge so a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing before I started tearing into guitars and stuff like that I had studied so much stuff and I still made mistakes. I still boogered stuff up. This is the bar that should be on this particular guitar. This is the bar that came on it. And we look at them from the top and they're pretty doggone similar. I mean, they should be identical. But the bar receiver is obviously, this one has been changed. Now, I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure that what happened was the trim got lost. You know, the actual bar itself that you pop in there got lost. 
Now, rather than just going out and getting an Ibanez edge trim, which will pop right back in there, no problem, into the JT6, they were like, oh, I better go and buy a thing, and then they went to Guitar Mart and bought one of these that came with the receiver for one of these, a Floyd Rose. Now, this right here is a Floyd Rose. It is a made in Germany, holy smokes, honest to God, for real Floyd Rose. This is not a Floyd Rose. It says Floyd Rose. There's no made in Germany right there. Let's get a real good close look. Real good close look. What are the big differences here? What do we see? That is actually machined in. That Floyd logo is machined in. That's a graphic, that's a stamp. And you know what? Right here it says licensed under Floyd Rose patents. Why in the world would Floyd Rose need to say that they're licensed under their own patent? You know what? On a real one, it doesn't say that. This is a Chinese Floyd Rose branded thing. To the untrained eye, they sure look they sure look alike, don't they? But they are completely different. The quality is completely different. You can really, really feel it. But this and this are obviously wildly different completely different look the fine tuners they're built into the back here the bottom the way that these things go on it's completely different these have little uh little nuts underneath these slots this can move all around this right here your movement is in the top it, it, it's different and while they're similar enough to say that you know comparing them comparing these is kind of like uh, comparing apples to oranges you know I mean you can do it they're kind of in the same general realm but they are that different so when you try to put a Floyd part on a non-Floyd bar, and this thing is wildly non-Floyd, problems are going to happen. This is not the dumbest thing that was done with this bar. This is. Here's the problem is that this is for a Floyd Rose. This is a Jackson JT6. Look at this. Look at that. The hole patterns don't line up because they're not the same bar. So somebody thought that even though this part doesn't fit, that it would be a great upgrade to this particular bar, erroneously thinking that it's a Floyd Rose when it's not. So when somebody says, what's the freaking difference, man? That's the freaking difference. One of many. Here's another thing. In order to swap this out, the person had to loosen all these up and that will affect your intonation. And check it out, on the E-strings only, that's not tight at all. That's not tight at all. The rest of them are tight. But you know what? That's going to affect your intonation. That's going to change absolutely everything. I'm going to see if with all these parts, if I can cobble together a kind of working JT6 out of uh, this thing that came mangled. And these parts right here. I've got another plate right here, but unfortunately the threads are even worse in this one than they are in this one. So, in order to make my super cool late 80s Charvel super rare color guitar complete and all original and everything, I had to buy another JT6, which has significantly jacked the price of this guitar up. So... As we can see here, that's no longer a big, stupid Floyd Rose brass block, which, you know, it, it's not stupid if you put it on a Floyd, but it is if you put it on a JT6. 
the JT6 is in there, it's intact. I had to buy a new one. I have since got another plate from my buddy in Scotland and now I have an extra JT6. So uh, <laughs> maybe I'll find something to do with it one day. So the price of this guitar has just gotten stupid expensive. Anyway, I set it up, got it all intonated, everything's great. And wouldn't you know it, Damn it! This thing just isn't gonna quit fighting me all the live long day. I'm gonna have to swap out this. It's a uh, single pole, double throw on, on. And uh, I couldn't really find one of those, but I did find a double pole, double throw on, on. So I'm just going to swap that one over to this one and it should be good. Should, should be good. Will it be? No, let's find out. It wouldn't surprise me at this point if ghosts started coming out of this guitar. That was a complete pain in the butt. So I hope it works. So she fought me all the way to the end, but now this thing is good. In fact, I would say that other than a few bumps and bruises, it's every bit as good as it was when it came from the factory in 1988. Maybe even a little more so because, you know, a lot of times these things, when they're shipped from overseas, they show up not set up. And uh, that was just the way they went on the floor back then. And a lot of times still today from a completely mangled bar all the way to a shot switch. This thing was definitely more than I bargained for, but uh, I had to have it, you know? I had to have it. Yeah, she's good now, and it'll. this guitar will outlive me for sure, so I'm really happy about it. So until next time, this has been Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab, making the world a better place. One 80s classic at a time.